going to inquire to the organization to see if that's going to be something they do within their normal policy. We may well have debit balances in uh, the val in the accounts payable accounts, and then we're just going to reclassify them from uh, debit, you know, negative balances of a liability to asset balances. And then we have separate short-term and long-term payables. We want to make sure that we're separating out the short-term and the long-term payables. Make sure that different types of payables are properly classified. So if we have different types of classifications of payables, we want to make sure that they are in those proper classifications. Next, we're going to take a look at the assertion of presentation. There are two disclosure items of primary importance for accounts payable and accrued expenses with regards to presentation. Auditor needs to make sure that all related party uh, purchase transactions have been identified. So remember, whenever we have those related party transactions, we can think of a related party such as a subsidiary uh, or something like that. Then we have a we have issues because we're not we're concerned that there's not an arm's length transaction. We don't have market forces to help us determine that the transaction is at basically market prices. Therefore, we want to identify those for sure and look into those types of transactions. If material, the related party purchase transactions should be disclosed. So if the related party purchase transactions are materially material component, we want to disclose those because again, that relationship kind of makes those transactions a bit suspect in terms of whether their market validity of those types of transactions. The other primary concern is purchase commitments. When the entity has entered into a formal long-term purchase contracts, proper disclosure of the terms of the contract should be provided as a footnote. So when we have long-term basically contracts, we want to make sure that we're clear on what the commitment is in the contract. If we have a very complex contract and it's it, we're dealing with something that's going to be material, that's a problem. We want to know exactly where we stand in terms of the long-term obligations of a contract. Now we're going to take a look at accounts payable confirmations. Now, when you think of confirmations, you're, t you're thinking about a third-party verification. And normally, if you hear confirmation, the first thing that pops into your mind is probably accounts receivable confirmations. That's where we are most likely to do confirmations. That and the bank, you know, we'll send confirmations to the bank. We'll send confirmations to accounts receivable most of the time. Some of the customers to confirm the balances owed to the entity uh, by customers. Accounts payable, we can do the same thing, but it's usually not as necessary a process so we're, we're almost definitely going to do it for the cash some type of confirmation we're probably going to do it for accounts payable at least to some degree depending on the entity we're doing and then accounts payable we may do it but it's, it's a lesser degree of likelihood that we'll do confirmations meaning we're going to send confirmations out basically to uh the vendors now that owe the the company i mean that the company owes money to the company that we are auditing owes money to the vendors so they're going to be used less often than accounts receivable confirmations, uh, partially because auditor is able to examine externally created source documents related to accounts payable. So notice in accounts payable, we have other type of, of source documents that are not generated from inside the organization as opposed to accounts, pay accounts payable. When we're looking at the things that generated the accounts payable, the source documents are generated by, by the company. So uh, that's going to be less reliable type of information if we just look at the invoice that's going to be less reliable information with regards to accounts payable we're looking at bills and things that are going to be given from outside of the organization and therefore they are more reliable and possibly then we can rely less on things like confirmation when confirmations are used they are usually positive and are generally uh, blank confirmations in other words notice what we're not doing here we're not saying we're not saying hey here is the balance and you tell us basically yes or no on it, or we're not we're not even saying here's the balance and you know don't send it back if you don't agree with it, which would be a negative confirmation. We're having a positive confirmation saying, hey, we'd, we would like you to send it back either way. And they don't really have the option because we're gonna send it blank, meaning we're not gonna say here's the balance and do you agree with it or not. We're gonna say, you know, we, we feel that our this company that we are auditing owes you this much money as of this date or owes you money as of this date would you confirm the balance we're not going to give the balance we're going to give it blank they're going to show us the balance as of that date now notice that even you know, a lot of times when we think about these confirmations from the accounts receivable side of things notice the person that receives it if you're talking about receivable confirmations the person that receives it is owing the, the company that we're confirming the money and therefore they're they're 
they have less incentive to be kind of cooperative there. They might see the thing and say, and, and not want to deal with it or say that I don't owe the company money at, at this point in time. However, if you're, if you're dealing with a vendor, typically that means that the company that we are auditing owes them money. So if we ask them, do we owe you money? They're more, they're more likely to know exactly what that is and maybe have incentive to look it up and check it out and send it back to us so they're more they might be more likely and more incentivized to actually to have a higher rate of return of the confirmations in other words to accounts payable people because they're the people that the company that we're auditing owe money to and we're asking them how much money the company that we are auditing owe them and so they might be more likely to take it back now also remember all the rules with the confirmations are pretty much you know the same here we the auditor are doing the confirmation we're not going to do it on the company letterhead we're doing it outside of the company we're going to send them directly to the vendors and then the vendor is going to send them directly back to us the audit firm not to the company so we're keeping the company out of it the vendor is asked to provide the balance owed by the entity so then we have the audit findings identify misstatements uh with uh will be aggregated so we're going to take the misstatements we're going to aggregate them we're going to have the projected misstatement is then compared to the tolerable misstatement. So the projected misstatement that we get from our findings, we compare to the tolerable misstatement, the level of misstatement that we accept that would be acceptable that we're going to basically accept uh, if it's and then if the projected misstatement is less than the tolerable misstatement, the auditor has evidence that the account is fairly presented. So then we're going to say, OK, if it's less fairly presented, however, if the projected misstatement is greater than the tolerable misstatement, the auditor will conclude that the account is not fairly presented. So if it's greater than the tolerable misstatement, then of course we'd have to conclude it's not fairly stated.